Welcome to your quick movement break. I hope you're enjoying the Barefoot Movement Science Conference. Now, of course, the point of Barefoot Movement Science is to give us the knowledge that we have the confidence to go and move and to move more barefoot. So we can enhance all the beautiful benefits that we get from wearing Vivo Barefoot day to day, improved strength, balance, physical function, by reconnecting with our feet, mobilizing and strengthening our body, and of course, thinking about our posture and how we move. So without further ado, let us give our feet a round of applause. If you haven't already, I'm sure most of you are already barefoot, but if not, take your socks off, get barefoot, and let's give our feet a round of applause. So we're literally going to slap them. So slap your heels, clap your heels, clap your arch, Thank evolution for this biomechanical marvel that you have on the end of your legs. Just really being grateful here. Thank you feet. Reconnect, feel that right now. You can use your thumb in your arch and just massage along the inside of your arch towards the ball of your big toe. Of course, we're just going for a quick 10 minute, let's keep an eye on the time, a quick 10 minute session right now. So you can explore your feet and spend a lot more time doing all of these exercises. Okay, there we go. Getting your thumb into your arch. All right, now other foot. Give it a good slapping. Clap, thank you feet. So we are likely, hopefully, to take 300 million steps in our lifetime. That's a lot of steps to be grateful for. It's really important that we keep our feet mobilized, healthy, working. Okay, there we go, good clap. And again, just use your thumb to get into your arch and massage. If you feel any tension there, come back to it later and massage it out. Okay. Next, let's spread our toes. So we're going to shake hands with our feet. Now, if you've never done this before, it's an idea to use one or two fingers to begin with. If that's feeling a little bit painful, maybe rewind, just use a sock, weave a sock between your toes to spread them. If you wanna go for it and try this, then let's do it. Index finger between the big toe and the second toe. And we are going to just get those fingers in between the toes. This is a toe opening and an eye opening experience. <laughs> There we go, we've got them all through. Then we can bend them back, bend them down. So extension and flexion should feel lovely. Spreading the toes. Now, mobilize your ankle. So we're just doing circles with our ankle and then we can do a figure of eight motion in the opposite direction with our hand to mobilize the midfoot nice and slow there we go okay twist 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 and release the fingers other foot get those fingers between the toes as I said use a sock if this is feeling a bit crazy <laughs> This is a good way to spread those toes. So again, ooh, get that little finger in there as well. Extension, lifting toes up, flexion, lifting, pushing them back down again. So just creating some 
splay in the toes whilst moving them. And then let's go for it. So mobilizing the ankle, you can stabilize the bottom of your leg with your other hand, circles with the ankle and a figure of eight with your forefoot. My finger wants to pop out there. So yeah, keep your fingers in there. And then the other direction. So you can hear some lovely cracking and popping there. Keep it all moving. Nice to go a bit quicker and slow and try to keep mobilizing the forefoot. Okay, there we go. We've shaken hands with our feet and given them a round of applause. Wonderful. So that's some passive stretching and connection. Now let's see if we can dynamically actually move our toes. So can we lift them all up, splay them out, and then spread them back down again? So again, this is just quick now. You can be doing these exercises a few times a week. Up, splay, we can do them every day. Brushing our teeth for our feet, splay, and then down again. Now let's go for individual. So big toe down, little toes up. Distinguish between the big toe and the other toes. If you want to check out more of these exercises, please have a look at the Vivo Barefoot YouTube channel. We've now got more and more experts coming on there with different movement sessions. And there are lots from the last year on the Vivo Barefoot Instagram on the IGTV, where we are now gonna put all the new ones out on YouTube. Please check them out. So distinguishing between the big toe and the little toes. Okay, now let's go for some flexion and extension. Bending the toes underneath. We'll just do this a couple of times, but again, you can spend a lot of time doing this in your own time. And if you put it out further ahead, then you can feel like going into your ankle and your shin as well. Okay, flexion, bend it back, this other foot, bending all the toes underneath. And extension, okay, let's go for some squishing and splaying. Now, many people can't move their big toes. How do we start? By practicing squishing and splaying. So squish them all together as tight as you can. And then splay as wide as you can. And squish and splay. If you're better on one foot than the other, then you've got to practice on the foot that you're not as good on. Okay. Right, next, let's go for a quick round of jumping. Shake it all out. Now, of course, Huge amount of benefits to be had just from walking in Vivo Barefoot, improved strength, improved postural stability and balance. If we want to capitalize on that, then we mobilize and we think about how we move. And posture is hugely important for walking and running skill. So we want a well-aligned posture, soft and springy. And rhythm is of course super important as well. When walking, we recommend a rhythm of about 120 steps per minute, which may be slightly quicker than you currently do. This helps us to land underneath the body, not overstride, aim for more of a heel stroke rather than a heel strike. When it comes to running, it's a great idea to practice jumping and practice jumping at that optimal Running rhythm being about 180 steps per minute. Of course, there's room for maneuverability on that, but we wanna be quick footed, light and springy. So let's practice that. Now, when jumping on the spot, we wanna be thinking about lifting off the floor, landing with just forefoot, heel kiss, Forefoot striking in minimal footwear leads to the softest landings and this is likely to help reduce injuries or minimize injuries as long as we build up our time running progressively, listening to our body and our recovery. Okay, here we go. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Nice and light and springy. When you first 
learn to jump, maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds. It's much easier to find where you are and then slowly build up. Just four foot, heel kiss, nice and light. You can progress to jumping rope. You can progress to hopping on one foot, maintaining that quick rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. Just a quick jumping session. Feel free to get up and do some of these exercises while you're listening to the science and throughout the day. You cannot compensate for long periods of sitting with exercise. You need to, humans are designed to move. Okay, let's go for a little bit of kneeling and a squat and then back to the science. So up on your toes, kneeling down, toes forward. This is obviously a great mobility exercise for our forefeet and into the plantar fascia. Important that we are loading through the balls of our big toes and not winging our heels out to the sides. So we want to be here. And if it's comfortable for you, you can rock back onto the balls of the big toe. Tuck toes underneath and go for a sitting back down again. This is going to mobilize the top of the foot and into our shins and ankles. And again, you can rock back onto your forefoot to add a little more to that. Okay. Toes tucked underneath and standing up. All right, let's have a last little blast at a squat. So squats are the default seating position of human beings. It's not an athletic movement. It's something we ought to all be able to do. If you struggle with ankle dorsiflexion and keeping your heels on the floor, pop a little heel raise underneath your heel. An inch, a couple of centimeters is usually sufficient to help you maintain a good technique. Slowly bring that down and work on your ankle range. Lots of other ways we can improve our ankle dorsiflexion. So for now, we're going to create a little bit of torsion, twist our feet into the floor, not turning them out too much. Just a bit of torsion, hinge at the hip and at the knee and drop down into a nice comfy squat. And whilst we're in that squat, if we've got sufficient range in our ankles, hips, thoracic spine, we'll be able to maintain a nice even weight distribution through our feet and have our big toes in the floor and be nice and relaxed. So there we go, there's a quick movement session. Check out the Vivo Barefoot YouTube and remember that which we call thought is the evolutionary internalization of movement. So all great thinking, but let's keep moving.